don't have a sense of community that much mm. anymore mm. so i mm. really i would love to have a community center or a hobby center or something where people mm. can come in and just do any act, like a lot of activities singing yeah. dancing music yeah. whatever or they can have play games together so like where you like our building was yeah. you had friends and people would come and play together but a lot of buildings nowadays are just stand alone apartments mm. so it's a little harder for them to build community so i want a community center and especially for kids like nowadays kids are getting stuck in this whole you know cycle of tuitions and whatever yeah, they yeah need yeah yeah kids like go some place enjoy and come back like uh- hello once again to say something with mads today i'm very excited because i have someone a dancer but so first of all she's a dancer par excellence you if you are following um her uh, instagram she goes by the name uh, ninja right ninja yes. me ninja me yes and i am uh, let me give a little back story about janvi she uh, and me go a long way we used to stay together in the same complex when she was a tiny tot we see her growing and now she is an amazing dancer and we are here today to learn from her journey from her childhood to her being a dancer dance coach and also why she is here especially is about her special hobby she has started a library of second hand books and we must touch upon all this first of all let's welcome janvi welcome to my channel how are you feeling today hi i'm feeling great actually it's been a long time coming <laughs> uh meeting yeah. so i'm so nice to see you after so long actually true and it's almost uh, 10:30 45 in india and she has had a long day i'm so happy finally we could do this interview without further ado let's go to janvi's first love janvi i want to know when did you i knew you were into dancing but when did you think of taking it up as a full time career when let me uh, go back to your grade 10 or 12 what were you thinking of doing that time what was your mindset this is for all the people who are looking and thinking that yes i want to do i want to continue dancing but somehow uh circumstances don't allow me to do that so i would like to hear from you over to you i think i was definitely one of those people after 10th standard <clears throat> i was anyway going for regular dance classes you know there are weekly yeah. classes that you go for so i used to keep going and taking a break because board exams this that used mm-hmm. to keep happening but then after 10th i was offered a scholarship from them so they were like you are really talented why don't you train more with us Okay. and 11th grade in bombay is junior college so we have a lot of free time generally so i was like there's no harm in it like it's learning which, so my will do it this is which institute if you want to name the, the institute works. this is the dance works it's um ashley logos company yeah oh. so then um they were like why don't you do it and i was like i have nothing to lose i have free time i can actually invest in it learn more i've been stuck in the same regular classes for a while so then i did that and i think it opened my eyes to like the possibilities of dance mm-hmm. and it was a uh, twice a week class so mm-hmm. i got that chance but then around 12th after 12th grade there was Did a big like where is this this is 2000 2017 was where i got the scholarship to train okay and i did it i did it till at least um, midway to through 12th standard so I did it full of 11th and then half of 12th standard but then Oh um, that was a little bit of struggle like i think i was getting a little burnt out with just training a lot and mm-hmm. that kind of and i was applying to colleges for my degree mm-hmm. so that was the biggest decision where I, it was whether i should stay in mumbai continue training cuz i could pick a college in mumbai because i wanted to study mm-hmm. business it was like another mm-hmm. half of me but then i also wanted to get away at the same time so i ended up picking mm-hmm. pune even though my company is like to stay in mumbai we'll train more that kind of thing but then i finished my degree and the whole time it was like nagging in my brain what if what if what if so then i once i got done with my degree i came back and it during college also was dancing i was part of the dance crew i was the head of the club everything so mm-hmm. it's not like i left dance it was there with me so then i came back and i joined back again as a student just to stay in touch but i realized that that what if was still there in my brain so i was like you know what 
if i don't give it a proper shot i don't think i could ever you know let go of it i need to give it like a full 100% commitment before i can say okay now i'm you know doing mm-hmm. something else or i'm done so that's what mm-hmm. made me decide was regret <laughs> for not taking it up the first time mm-hmm. so uh, when i was listening to you it it is always a dilemma for people right to follow your uh, love or your passion or keep it as a back burner and come back to it later which becomes too late and uh, mm-hmm. you realize it within 3 years that no that's not for me i've done my duty and done my bit for people around here okay i have a degree you know just mention another thing i think the one thing that also helped me was dance as a career is very physical so you need to be young to be able to do it so i told myself that i'm young so i might as well do it now this is not something i can do later but i can yeah. always do business later. i can study and work later dance i need to be young so i gave myself that space right absolutely that's 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 a very valid point like this doesn't have a uh, after 40 you can take it up and, so you you can do this only when you are that age group and also how did how did your family support this this is a very very important question for the parents who are listening and i know your mom is into fitness and she is a professor of physical education in mumbai university but how what was her reaction and what was your father's reaction and what was the general discussion uh, at your home that time i think um it was more of me easing them into it i couldn't tell them outright all at once okay. that i'm going to dance and when i was easing into it i also transitioned i was working as well before i transitioned into dancing but as da- as working in the, in the, in a dance company so i didn't let go so my transition phase was also i would do half and half it wasn't like i just quit my job and went into dance i was doing half of like i cut down my hours i became part time as doing dance and then slowly i started reducing that and increasing dance so it was more of a transition which helped my parents mm-hmm. also because i know it it would be a very it would be a shock for them or like a sudden change and it's harder mm-hmm. for them to adjust to such things so it was more of my sister she is my number one she is the one who's always like yeah yeah do whatever i'm here for you that kind mm-hmm. but like now as my like now they see me perform they see my shows and they're like okay like they all they also know that i've told them that it's because i'm young like now yeah. so okay. i'm doing it now like i've given them that little bit of relief because yeah. they're like oh my god what if she just doesn't do anything ever again that sort of thing yeah so as you know very and i want to give it a good try so i think that sort yeah. of helped them get on board with it so so how many years ha- you have been doing this full time now like teaching as well as learning it's so like how many years uh, you you finished your graduation which year in 22 so this is i've finished two years of Just doing one, that two years okay okay you have a, um also you know as a as a parent as an onlooker when i see someone dancing i would say wow fantastic i root for you but if it is your own daughter <laughs> you would say oh let wait 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 she can do it <laughs> not you uh, don't follow you do your career first let's see afterwards i think most <laughs> of the parents cheer up for others when we at their own home <laughs> they have a different set of rules so this is for all those who are listening the uh, jati's example that she said i will give with that much time it's not a permanent solution for me and i my love for it i know that there is a shelf life for a dancer so let's give mm-hmm. that time so people even in even a sportsman even a dancer they have yeah. a shelf life you need to continue and you think of something else after that right but that's like clarity helps my parents because i had clarity they were like okay she's not just you know not thinking and making a decision without you know actually considering everything mm. so i had clarity so they were like okay she is not blindly doing this yeah right that that's very mature thinking right uh, tell me how uh, you are managing right now you have a lot on your plate and you also wanted to start this a uh, little uh, beautiful thing we for which we connected is a second hand books library at your backyard why why suddenly this you already had so much going what <laughs> made you choose this and uh, how is it doing and how i think it's a community led thing right many people are helping so uh-huh. tell us about this journey i i think the may we have a lot of books at home like a lot me and my sister my dad we read a lot and okay. um i keep like i like to have books you know not just 
you know borrow them and give it back like normal libraries that's why we have a huge collection no, and no. i wish i could give more but we don't have a library culture in like our mm. community you can just go and like mm. be like oh i'm part of the library let me go read like how it was in school in school you had a library you could go was, yeah. Mm. yeah but we don't have that once you get out of school which was kind of sad and i missed that and i kept telling my sister you should start a library i don't know why i think i was just putting it on her for no reason and like, why am i telling her i can do it so and then i realized that obviously like to have a library you need books but a lot of like i don't want to go and buy and get books because a lot of people like me own a lot of books you know and we don't have space in our houses for them or you know we don't read them anymore something like that so there are a lot of people who have books that they don't know what to do with or they would like to you know keep it somewhere else so i reached out to a few people as a whole women's network in kalina that network and a lot of like mothers came through like the kids have gone to university so they have all of their books like those kind of ones so they reached out and i got a lot of donations so then i was like okay this is something it's not just i you know mm-hmm. i have this problem or like mm-hmm. i have these books everyone has it so that's what got it flowing at least and then i was like okay let's do this um so janvi since you started this um, second hand book library what do you see about the reading habits of the youth today so do you see it increasing or you think this libraries are going to help them come back to the books um i think i think around the pandemic everything became super digital so people were on their phones a lot we needed to connect but as the pandemic went out suddenly everyone got into a mode of self care i need to you know look after myself build good habits those kind of things like a new start so suddenly a lot of my friends people around me were saying um i need to start reading and they'll ask me because they don't have any other person who reads and they don't know how to start they don't know how, what to read how to start reading so they come to me <laughs> and i got that a lot from people around me we see it on okay. instagram like, i need to read so now i think there's a sudden like small movement of like the youth suddenly getting into trying to read or at least making some sort of connection with like good habits building a new kind of you know and I, especially around like start of a year and when there's like something new years habits mm. that kind of resolution so now there is like a small need for it because they can't access it even if they want to do it mm. so there is the gap right. and also they don't know whether they are going to invest that much money in buying the book which when yeah. they might not read at all beyond 10 pages so might as well these libraries at least something in hand and uh, to get them started i think that's the most important message you can give to bring back for us we didn't have social media so we grew up on books but <laughs> for people to wean away from social media towards book is going to be a a difficult thing because the attention span has reduced like anything but i think uh, this is uh, really going to help so uh, how how do you see that uh, see uh, it doing it single handedly or you have people around you who are helping and how did you categorize the books for especially facilitating for the youth so i have two of my friend my family helps me one because we are it's in our backyard <laughs> but also i have two of my friends from golden and what square are the timings of the library um the library is ev- it was every saturday 4 pm to 6 pm once a week so it's okay. only for those two hours now we're shifting it towards to thursdays okay. um same timing 4 to 6 but on thursdays because um over here on saturdays every alternate saturday is a holiday and a working day so a lot of the university students were like they approached us and they like we don't come on alternate saturdays so can you keep okay. it on a week we were like okay we can try that because they wanted to come every week instead of months and two weeks wow yeah. and i have simran and ronan from golden square helping me so like yes. you know um, yeah i know them she was helping me since the start like i told her about it and she thought it was a great idea and i needed someone to help me with donations for the books ronan sort of got dragged into it because he came like he doesn't read at all <laughs> but he came and he just like there's no one doing your marketing you know like um i i'll do it i'm free i'm like get done with my final semester so we sort of okay. host <laughs> right how nice to have friends around doing that 
But I mm. hope and uh, I, I would love to visit it once I come there uh, anytime. And especially since, in, since it's in the university area, so there'll be a lot of people who might come and uh, mm. pick up those books, which will be very, very uh, easy for them to access. So people don't want yeah. to go travel to go to libraries. That area, our area doesn't have any libraries as such. So I think uh -huh. things it should grow. Um, so I'll say a question. You asked me how we categorize them. So yes. um, the main categorization is the type of book, as in fiction, non-fiction, kid section, um, plays and poems. We had a few donations of that as well. Within that, we go alphabetically with the author's name, not the okay. name of the We have similar authors together. So that's how we used so to do, do you it. Have do you have a library card and how much you charge for the books? So a library card, we do it online. So once they join the library, we make a digital library card. Oh. Um, for charges, that we have like four plans. Uh, we have four plans based on the person. If they want to borrow one book a week, two books a week, it depends on that. If it's just one book a week and they want to have a membership for just one month, it's like 150 rupees. If they want to have the same membership for three months, then it's just 300. So that's the same. If you want two books per week, then it's 250 for a month and it's um, 600 for three months. So it's very minimal. Okay. So everyone can actually do it. Yeah, actually, that's that's amazing. To give the flexibility is also important. Yeah, Javi, uh, as a dancer, I, I'm interested to know how you keep your physical fitness as well as mental fitness, um, the peak performance all the time. I mean, it's a very, very taxing and to the body as well as the mind because you are managing your work as well as a dancer. Tell us how you balance this and what is your routine from morning till the end, uh, till the night. So physically, I think most of our training, we train from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. almost every day. So that takes care of my physical fitness more or less okay. i do work outside of it like on off days i do a lot of workouts because you have to build muscle not yes. just you know do dance workouts so i do work on my arms uh, mental health is a little harder because you need time and space to do it so a lot of times at the start of our training like a nine if we have a 9 a.m class like ballet Usually before that, we have something which is meditation related or, mm. you know, small for 15 minutes. So that usually is part of our schedule because I, like our company is sort of aware of the importance of mental health and, you know, mm. state of mind mm. before you start. Mm. So we do have mm. meditation or something of that form mm. in the starting of the day. Sometimes when I've had a very overwhelming day, I have an app. A meditation app so i use that at night when it's only when it's like a very overwhelming day and i need to have an outlet mm -hmm. i use that app. it is super helpful because it gives you two minute meditations five minutes so it's like not too okay. long okay. not too long yeah yeah that's a very uh, pertinent point that you don't have to block half an hour for meditation which is not possible for young people so these small meditations just a breathing techniques just to calm yourself helps I also wanted to ask you about your diet. So as a dancer, mm -hmm. what you eat to keep up that high level of intensity of energy, just uh, just as a layman, I would love to know your diet and the um, kind of yeah the breaks which you take, what kind. Right? Take us through uh, in, in detail for people to know that how a dancers retain their body you can't put on weight and you are high intensity workouts yes what do you start your day oh, with? Uh, yeah definitely we have to maintain how we look for sure with muscles we have to build that as well so you have to be careful how we eat but a lot of new dancers don't realize that we suddenly if you're if you're just starting training your body goes through a huge physical drain so you need to put in calories you have to have a lot of carbs which a lot of dancers mm -hmm. avoid because of image mm. issues. So that's actually not good for the industry. But you have to put in a lot of carbs because that is what burns first. Okay. If you don't have carbs in your body, then you start burning proteins, which is what you need in your body. So a lot of dancers don't realize that. So in the morning, whatever breakfast, carbs. My breakfast is usually carbs. Like will be some bread thing, a dosa thing, idli thing. 
something like that super something um, substantial home, which is yeah, yeah home cooked hmm. home cooked everything home cooked um then we get a lunch break around that time i eat boiled eggs for protein so i'll have two to three boiled eggs along with i do rice but a lot of people do roti sabzi but me personally my metabolic rate is very high which means i burn calories calories faster than others so you have to adjust your diet based on your metabolism someone's metabolism is low so they don't really need that much carbs because they don't burn at that fast i need to eat rice again like lunch also i have a lot of it and then after that it gets slow because then and then during the then the day goes on where i'm dancing a lot so that's when all my energy starts going away and then at the end of the day you need to have good recovery so you have to have like a lot of vitamin vegetables vitamins and minerals those kind of things i'm giving mainly vegetarian diet because a lot of people are vegetarian here i mean i can eat non veg but i don't like to eat it because it digests slowly so mm. i don't anything but yeah towards the end of the day you don't eat as much because you need your body to slow down so you eat a little less or eat fruits lots of fruits electrolytes is also underestimated a lot of people drink think drinking water is enough but we lose a lot of electrolytes and salt during the day so instead of energy drink it's better mm. to have electrolytes or like ors or something like that mm. instead of energy so that's sugar and caffeine mm. so mm. that's the big diet thing so even for you you mean to say for everybody speaks about eating less after the sunset uh, go down slow on eating so you think that's that works for you also even then when you are working hard towards the end of the day you have more classes i uh, practice etc so then still you eat less for dinner and more so, for your lunch right yeah mo- my lunch is the most a lot of people have breakfast as the most but my lunch is the most because um the way my schedule is i start my day with the dance as well and i end my day with dance so mm. if i eat too heavy in the morning i won't be able to use my body mm. so mm-hmm. lunch is where i have my energy mm. substance eating kind of thing mm. dinner what happens is during the day my especially towards the end of the day there's a lot of adrenaline that has built up so that adrenaline doesn't allow me to eat too much as well cuz when you have when you're high on adrenaline Mm. you suddenly your body can't hold it in like you end up um it's harder to keep food in like you know when you have excitement or fear or something a warm water helps a lot at the end of the day or like during the day for drinking water warm water helps because we have a tendency to fall sick because of how intense our work is so that helps somehow i don't know for the past few months i've been doing it and it's really helped with mm. how it's helped but it has so today you you drink warm water throughout the day um i drink it when i'm at home because if i take a water yeah, bottle otherwise. it's not warm so at home i try to always drink warm water oh that's amazing that's a nice tip tell me one more thing which i wanted to ask you is what is the biggest mis- misconception about people joining dance as a profession why do people feel uh, that okay it is not a profession uh, that it could be just a hobby so how difficult <laughs> it is to convert this hobby into a profession which you could transcend that many people may not they might just want to keep it as a hobby how difficult it is to balance this for people who are also aspiring to do something like this i think the biggest misconception is especially now in the world of reels and tiktoks is that it's easy as in like that's yeah. the biggest problem that even we face in the industry when we work with people not from the industry is like it's so easy why don't you just do this i'm like no it takes a lot of hours that goes into it we train our bodies a lot so po- like example we're doing an annual day a lot of times we get from the teachers like it's so easy why the kids only doing 2 minutes why are they not like this why are they not i'm like you try why don't you try teaching them it is very hard dance is not something that you know oh they can't mm-hmm. sing or act take care of the left over people do dance that's also a talent so i think mm-hmm. that is the biggest misconception that it's easier or something mm-hmm. that it's actually a little it's very hard cuz 100% of your body goes into it. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure and people only see the few who are making reels and all because there are so many who are uh, still trying to make it with their hard work and real and also tell me um, to be on social media is very important right 
for dancers or for any creative people because you have to reach people to know who you are so how often you do this reels and does that is there a pattern in your reels or you do it when you have time how do you uh, handle your instagram so i had built a habit when again this is like when i was doing my board exams i took a break from dancing but i didn't want to lose touch so i told myself that i would try to do one dance video per month and okay. i kept like i kept my instagram accountable that i will post on instagram once a month so it's not like for myself i can get away with it so i kept that up for a year it worked pretty well so i was still in touch like i even though i was doing it like you know end of the month like 30th of the month i would end up doing it procrastinated but i kept that up for a year i kept it up for another year and that really helped me especially when we went super into lockdown cuz started this habit before lockdown so okay. in the lockdown of that as well and i think that has built into it now like now maybe i'm not doing a lot of my own learning choreography and doing it because i do so many classes whatever i'm doing in the class i decide okay i will this will be my video for Take the a month real out of that yeah yeah, yeah. So i use that and whereas when it comes to trending reels and everything i don't really prefer going down that way because there's nothing to it like there's no challenge there's no interest all the trending dance reels are easy and i don't mm. there's no like appeal for me so i was like mm. i don't want to be fake on the internet just because internet is a generally fake place you put up your best mm. a different self mm. so i'd like to keep it more as me as a dancer and not me yes. trying to be what's popular so that's mm. one thing I- myself and it helps because then it takes the pressure off being like oh i need to be relevant so i need to post this i don't have that pressure i'll post what i feel like i should post but as long as i keep right. it up regularly keep it up regularly consistently yes that's the biggest thing like okay you have committed to it you will do it come what may this is what janvi is telling all of us uh, and i think we all know this but we just say okay who is who is looking at us was no the algorithm is looking algorithm is going to do if not anything else for that you have to keep posting regularly so this interview has been a mixture of i'm going from dance to books books to dance <laughs> and you're seamlessly mixing things two things but i hope people who are listening will get the two sides of janvi uh, so so seamlessly meeting and uh, flowing like a river so let's see uh, uh, if i have to ask you about your favorite book which comes to your mind right now and which you think that has left an impact on you what would that book be so since you asked me i actually have it here behind me i got it with me to show um is this book it's um cain and abel oh yes by oh my Jeffrey god Archer. you reminded me of my uh, youth your age This is the yeah. first Jeffrey so Archer this, I read. What a book! What a book! Exactly, it's so good. It was actually a birthday gift for me, so I I didn't I didn't choose the book. It was given to okay. me as a birthday gift, and um, this book, wow. the impact it left on me is it's the only book that I've read which made me cry. And it's not a book that people cry, and it's yeah, on like you no, know, yeah, it's it not is, a crying it book it at is. all. <laughs> yes, but um, I'm very not. I don't get affected by emotions in a book so I don't cry like people die I'm like okay I read it like my sister cries all the time people around me cry but this book made me cry because um I think I felt a lot of those characters with because this goes a lot into like it's obviously Cain versus Abel like how they perfect matches of each other how they push each other to like hit their potential but they're not friends but like they're so ambitious and like how they grow They, like themselves like and their empire around them just for like the end to be so like bitter yeah. where yeah i don't know i'm giving spoilers about the book but no no uh, please i think this is one of the uh, classic books and that yeah, and i'm a business that, I read almost all jeffrey archer after that i have been yeah, so not all of this so, this so and i think and i think i'm also a business kid at heart and this guy i mean yes. like in this it is yes. a super business environment Correct. that they are in so i think that also hit me more directly but and i was hoping for a happy ending because i love happy endings and it just didn't like that ending when he died before we saw them i was i was gone at that oh <laughs> like okay. i stayed up yeah. all night i was just during exams like i i was studying half an hour at the end of like i was studying for exams so i'd be like okay i'll read for half an hour then go to sleep to clear my mind but then i think i hit the middle of the book 
at you some can't point. stop reading it you and can't then, yeah, stop reading it. it and then i and then my sister woke up she said, what happened why are you crying and i'm like please <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, that reminds me that I have not read uh, fiction for a long period of time. I think I go back to fiction because there are too many of self help books I've read, mental health and um, uh, principles of psychology of influencing yeah. and so many, so many from that. Yeah, this 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 is something which I should get back to. Uh, Jani, this is uh, one. Uh, section when you get to ask me a question do you have a question for me go ahead shoot so i wanted to ask you one two i have actually two questions they're both a half questions so one is if you had to name my library it's called the sun library but if you had the chance to name it like rename it what would you name it oh my god that's a tough one rename it rename it okay the sun library yeah it comes from my surname my surname is kadiravan which means sun and it's an outdoor okay, library so it's all the sun that, light that, so it like that's the well connection yeah no, but we're going to I, monsoon so i don't know how sun library is going to work in monsoon so <laughs> i need a new sunshine sun library and uh, nothing comes to my mind as such mm, yeah. okay maybe not my library if you had to name your library what? you name it. my library okay hmm one word is difficult i always think in uh, lines so i think my channel itself is called say something with mad mad so i will say read something with mads oh that's actually <laughs> really nice yeah <laughs> um so yeah. i had a second question um not a library but did you have like if you had a similar you know like maybe not a childhood thing but something that was in your childhood that not around anymore like libraries that we had what would you bring back if you could okay memory uh, what would i do if i had to bring back oh yeah definitely those street games we used to play the 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 pitto the what is it called the bori yes one two three wo hop hop scotch what do we say <laughs> yes those wo all the time we used to bring those things and throw and one two three four five six whole year whole rare round we'll play and our favorite um, these were our favorite games i would bring them in the life of children i mean so much joy no money invested by parents nothing but you just play of course um, uh, we did uh, we had a long long hour uh, like we would play from uh, till the parents called us 8 o'clock yeah. because we had other tv nothing so we would play i think those games are something i'm very nostalgic i didn't see my son play it at all no <laughs> outdoor games they would go from tennis to all those academies which mm. which i think is such a waste of time play play outdoor and uh, enjoy so yeah that that's something which i want to bring back that's that amazing question uh yeah this is uh, i like this too both of them made me think i think uh, more than any questions which i faced these are the two <laughs> questions that made me really think thank you for bringing this thanks a lot <laughs> all right so um i would also like to ask uh, to end this i would want to ask you what where do you see yourself do you see yourself as starting your own dance academy some day or you see yourself as um an entrepreneur or a businessman you you are you you imagine you are 10 years or say 15 years ahead looking at janvi where what would you be doing see everything may not come true but what is your vision for future um i mean you said it actually it's more of a combo of what you said so um dance and like reading library community everything i think yeah. it it is very we don't have it anymore we don't have a sense of community that much mm. anymore mm. so mm. i really i would love to have a community center or a hobby center or something where people mm. can come in and just do any act, like a lot of activities singing yeah. dancing music yeah. whatever or they can have play games together it's like where you 
like our building was yeah. huge we had friends and people would come and play together but a lot of buildings nowadays are just stand alone apartments mm-hmm. so it's a little harder for them to build community so i want a community center and especially for kids like nowadays kids are getting stuck in this whole you know cycle of tuitions and whatever yeah, they need yeah 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 kids like go some place enjoy and come back like art and craft something like that so having a whole community center for people to just be part of and wow. they can come and all that that's ideally what yeah. i want to do Jabi this is awesome i think i'm getting attracted to it myself i mean i i have a vision of starting a cafe but with people who are elderly people who who will serve them uh, they will be employed they will talk and they will and with them the children come and play so it would serve as a purpose to in one like actually in something the- similar i thought of maybe you know like people are part of the community they can do like a session where the older generation teaches some skill to the younger generation that's lost yeah. and the other way around like an exchange where the younger people teach like a digital thing to the older people exactly so like, let's get on with this when you are yeah. done with your dancing i am all for this we will make it happen yeah. one day probably i think you're very very close to my idea thank you so much for sharing this powerful ending like your vision is so powerful and i wish you all the best janvi in whatever you take you are such a good soul and you're a pure heart and it's a pleasure to have you talk to you uh, throughout with various topics and i hope my listeners have a lot of take away especially i am so happy that she gave her dad plan how a young dancer should eat and eating is so important for any professional who are whether athlete or dancers or for that matter for any profession but more so for them so please follow this and let me know how you enjoyed this interview i had a blast i hope janvi enjoyed it too thank you so much thank you much, so janvi. much for having me it was really nice seeing you thank you so much see you again next week with another youth another topic and another discussion join us week after week for this enlightening conversations Adios for now. Bye-bye.